authority. Pinpoint precision with exact track 4D. Dissecting storms, exposing dangerous conditions miles above the surface. Oh, we were just told we cannot get a good shot of this moon. That's it. This we're this super the sky. moon. Let's just go outside. We can go look at it with our bare eyes. No binoculars needed. Clouds. Clouds getting in the way. And then I kept hearing no moon, no moon, which is actually the new moon, which is no moon versus that of the full moon, which is what we had early this morning. Well, what I got confused. <laughs> so when the, when the new moon is out, there's no moon. We see the dark side, so we don't see the moon. But when it's full, we see dark the lit side. side. I feel like we should howl. <laughs> or turn on some Pink Floyd, one of the two. Dark this is side out of, the of control. Okay. Yes. I'm going to blame Joy for it this must one. Be I was fault. on track talking about weather and remaining focused. Joy, let's head on over to the board. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Where's my no button? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, all right, cold front moving through. There's some of the clouds that we have that are moving through. That was what was obscuring our view via the tower cam, but... It, you do have it? If you do have it, just pop it up. In that. There you go. Oh, wow. That kind of looks very October-ish there. Yeah, that is sort of... Yeah, there you go. There's the howling moon. <laughs> or in this case, it's the hunter's moon. Nice job, Isaac. Finding it there, even as the clouds move by. That is cool looking. All right, so we'll see those clouds as they're moving in. Here for tonight, they'll stick around early tomorrow morning and then blend away, kind of the way that we woke up this morning. This is what we're watching here as that batch continues. But let's head out into the tropics. This is what everybody's like, wait, what? This is now a thing? Yeah, so from 20%, 30%, now a 40% to in the seven-day window. And I showed this earlier this evening, the convective activity, when you look at what's going on here in the Caribbean, compared to what's going on in the Atlantic. I mean, this thing is just getting shredded to the north. A Little bit of activities left over, but it is sparse compared to what we're seeing in the Caribbean. So go figure, we now have that 40% and we are up to AL95, the spaghetti plots. And I think it's interesting that the two same ones that are lifting to the north, the rest of them aiming over toward the Yucatan, and in the Atlantic waters case, which by the way is down to a 20% chance, if anything, it looks like it's going to be a rainmaker as it moves through Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and then possibly over to Jamaica. 40s and now down to the low 50s at Jacksonville, still a little bit warmer and windier here beachside. Double digit winds will continue overnight tonight. The friction of the wind, the water temperature being warmer, that's gonna help to buffet those temperatures, holding you mainly into the um, upper 50s and lower 60s. At first I thought, what are we seeing some fog here? The atmosphere is pretty dry. So I think what we have uh, could be a little condensation that's inside of the windscreen. We'll check some of the other temperatures. The wind is down to zero, the humidity not quite high enough, and the dew point spread is off. So that would keep us out of uh, seeing some, any of the thicker fog It would obscure the visibility like that. Low patchy ground fog could be possible in those wind sheltered areas. And here are the clouds as they'll stream in here for tonight and then begin to part ways. Heading out out on the water, I showed you the beaches earlier, small craft advisories and even choppy to rough conditions here as you get inside of uh, the St. John's and the Intracoastal. And on the sandy shores, that high risk for rip currents is going to continue. Our temperatures overnight tonight slipping down once again to the 40s, even some upper 30s possible into southeast Georgia giving way to what will still be mainly into the 60s, upper 50s, lower 60s as we take you out beachside. But a day with the afternoon highs in the 70s, most of us set our AC somewhere between, say, 74 up to about 78 degrees. In that case, Mother Nature's got the AC set for you. So open doors and windows there as it becomes available either early morning or when you get back home later in the evening. The upper 40s will uh, take us through the early morning hours as our temperatures fade from where we are. And look at this, we're well below what we wanted at 11 o'clock at 58 degrees, there's 50, uh, 54, so we're already down to 50. And it does make for pleasant camping conditions overnight, hanging out by the fire, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you know what? If you got the time, extend it. It even looks good here for the start of the work week. Makes it easier to pack things up as you head back to work for Tuesday. That's where we find the 80s. They'll build in Tuesday and continue to uh, through the rest of the upcoming work week with clouds building in for Thursday. And so far, so good. Looking dry through the seven-day stretch. Thanks, Richard.